Greetings adventurers and welcome to ADV in Japan. So today I have kind of a tutorial slash install, but the main focus is gonna be on a tutorial. And what I'm gonna be showing you guys is something that uh, quite a few KTM owners are a little bit reticent about getting into. And that is the headlight assembly. I'm gonna be disassembling the headlight assembly, showing you how to get access to the wiring harness in there. Uh, you may not wanna do this if you are not a DIY person, if you don't know electronics very well, um, if you've never done any type of mechanics kind of stuff, I would not recommend doing any of this stuff by yourself. That's it. If you are used to DIY and you kind of get your hands a little dirty or you're like me, you kind of have a little bit of a, um, you know, handyman, um, you know, working on cars background and stuff like that, then certainly this is something within your realm and you can save yourself quite a bit of money. Now, one of the reasons why you may want to break down this assembly and get in here, um, well, for one, you could have a busted or an operable blinker that you need to replace. All that stuff is sitting inside um, just behind this headlight on the wiring harness. You need to get access to that. Uh, another thing too is you've got accessories that you want to connect to the bike that you don't necessarily want to or have to run all the way back to the battery terminal. There are three accessory uh, hookups behind this headlight, uh, one of which is directly connected to the battery and two of which are directly connected to the ignition. So if there's an accessory, so for example, like a GPS unit or what I'm going to be putting in today, uh, a tire pressure monitor system, um, those would, would, you'd definitely want to uh, connect those to the ignition connectors. Uh, so you, when you turn the bike on, you know, it, it turns those auxiliary items on. And then when you turn the bike off, it'll turn them off and you don't drain the battery. All right. So if this is something you're definitely interested in learning how to do to just get this whole thing gutted and t uh, taken apart, then definitely stick around as we're going to get into it. Okay, guys, this is not as crazy or scary as it may seem. You know, I've posted photos with my entire headlight assembly taken off and, you know, people are just like, what are you doing? Go to the mechanic. <laughs> and it's just like, listen, it's not as scary as it seems. I'm going to, through this install, I'm going to show you some pitfalls, things that I've done, that I, mistakes that I've made, certainly, and some things uh, that will, will make this whole process a lot easier. As I've, I've taken this headlight out and put it back in, probably I can say maybe half a dozen times. Just from, you know, uh, messing around with auxiliaries, plugging things in, disconnecting them, finding out that I didn't want to use it, so pulling it back out, buying something else, putting it back in. So I've done this quite a few times, so I'm pretty familiar with what's going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the tools that you're going to need to uh, make this happen. Okay, so uh, you're gonna need a size four, five, and three uh, Allen uh, set here, kind of this T-bar Allen set here. I also have these just in case if I can't get my hands in where I need to to get this stuff loosened. Uh, you're gonna need both a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver. Uh, always, always, just in case I have some needle nose pliers. And then uh, because we're gonna be installing this little TPMS unit, um, you're going to need some uh, tape in order to, to finish that install up. Now on the end here, I have installed the uh, male version here of the connectors here, which will go straight into the ignition connectors. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and tape that up. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with a TPMS is, it's essentially a, uh, well, it is, it's, that's what it is. It's a tire pressure monitoring system and it makes use of, um, Bluetooth technology and there are two little units that go straight on the uh, the air valves on the tire. There's little Bluetooth units inside here and they communicate with this and basically tell you exactly what's going on with your tire pressure. And uh, I used to have one of these um, but it broke. I don't know why it just stopped working. So it was a cheap one you know, it was probably, I think, on AliExpress, maybe less than 20 bucks. So I went ahead and got a little bit nicer one. Uh, and then the other thing too is, unlike my previous one, this one will connect directly to the ignition. I don't have to worry about charging it. I don't have to worry about losing that cord. And then probably most important of all, it's one less cord that I have to bring when I go on adventures. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be putting this bad boy in today. I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna locate that. 
There's a really cool little place where I think I can probably wire this and get away with it. A nice clean install. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, now before we get into this, uh, what I wanna do is kind of explain how this whole headlight assembly is put together. And it's gonna give you a little perspective on uh, the best way to go about um, doing this. So basically there are two pieces. The entire housing here uh, holds the light in with two pieces and it's split right down the middle. So you got your left half and you got your right half. And there are several bolts that are actually pinching these two things together. So these, these bolts that end up pinching this assembly together are gonna be accessed on the right side. And uh, you've got one down here You've also got one in here, and then inside here, there's one more bolt that's pitching everything up at the top as well. All that is accessed on the right side. Everything else after that, they're gonna be bolts on both sides. So bolts on both sides, you're gonna find for the TFT, it's gonna be one there, one on the other side. Your GPS uh, mount is gonna have two bolts on either side as well too. Then uh, you see you've got this uh, headlight kind of supporter bar here that holds the fender. Uh, you've got bolts on both sides that are kind of pushing this whole assembly together. Um, you've also got two bolts underneath here on each side that are uh, pushing, uh, that are holding the headlight in. And then finally, you've got four bolts, two on each side that are holding the, uh, the headlight in from this side as well too. So that's pretty much it in terms of what is holding this whole assembly together. So quite a few bolts, and that means that you're gonna have to have some type of system, unless you've done this several times like I have, to make sure that you don't get these bolts mixed up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to this, uh, um, to this windshield. So there's gonna be several fast forward parts as I'm kind of undoing these bolts, and then I'll go ahead and stop and do my explanations here. Okay, so that comes off. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the mounting frame for the windshield here. And you can see I already have different bolts up here. And that is because uh, the KTM OEM bolts are just, they're just like cheese, man. These, these Allen bolts they give you, I, I swear they're made out of like iron or something like that. Just absolute garbage. They get stripped out really bad. And this upper piece here is holding a ton of things in. You can see it's holding the uh, headlight uh, uh, guard here. It's also holding the windshield mount, upper mount, and then also my GPS mount. So I wanted to make sure to have some pretty heavy duty, um, you know, nice steel, stainless steel bolts up here to, you know, kind of keep this whole assembly together. Okay, good. So we've got everything, you know, auxiliary third party stuff for the most part off of here, except for my auxiliary lights, which, yeah, and that's pretty much what we're gonna do next. So let's go ahead and pull off my auxiliary lights here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna release this center column here from the bottom so I can get to it. Now you may have, um, you may have auxiliary lights, you may not. Uh, if you do, you know, just remove that. However, you've got that set up. Uh, there are two bolts under here that you're gonna have to remove. I don't have those bolts in there because this little kind of DIY auxiliary light, light bar is actually holding everything, is actually holding everything in. So, all right, I'm just gonna rest that on the fender there. Good, so we know this is our auxiliary lights. Okay, so this will loosen this up a little bit here. Assuming again that you have removed the two bolts that are underneath there. And you can see here, this is just basically, you know, clipped in on each side here. So we need to release those clips and then this whole assembly will come right off. So I like to kind of get my finger in there and then pull the other side and it just kind of pops out like so. Really simple, really easy. Good, okay, so we got that off now. Now what we can start doing is, uh, we're gonna pull these fenders off here because it's gonna allow it uh, us to get access to some of these bolts behind there a lot easier. Now you have to be careful with these fenders. They're, I'm pretty sure they're called fenders. I'm not sure what else you would, 
I've heard them called spoilers, fenders, fairings, all that stuff. So whatever. Spo maybe maybe it's a spoiler. I don't know. <laughs> One thing to be careful with these is um, so the way it goes in is essentially you've got you've got this little tongue and groove thing here that kind of sits sits inside there in that little grommet. So the first thing you need to do is just pop that in when you're assembling, and then it's held in with these two screws. And unfortunately, it's not quite, you can see here, it's not actually quite, like it just doesn't align very well. You can see if this, this is aligned up here, you can see down here, this is not really lining up with the screw in there. So um, that, cause for a, that causes for a lot of stress on this part. And as you can see here, I've snapped this thing several times and I've glued it several times actually. Uh, this is not cheap. These things are so expensive. I've also had to glue washers on here to make sure that everything stays together here. It doesn't get cracked and further cracked and busted. Good. So we're going to go ahead and keep those with that. And we'll do the other side here. Great. Again, just being, yeah, you can see, so I've already got this cracked again. So I need to go ahead and get some glue and probably glue that again before I put all this back together. Okay, again, so you're keeping everything kind of in the same place so you know what goes where. Okay, next, what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the TFT. So the TFT uh, is locked in with three screws. It's gonna be two here and then one down at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do these. One thing to keep in mind about these uh, bolts is they are very, very, um, crappy <laughs> these are aftermarket bolts these are really really nice it's the oem ktm bolts that just strip out so easily uh it could be my fault though because you know at times i have cranked these down pretty hard but um it doesn't need a whole lot and you can find these bolts online i believe these are called button bolts so i think i think it's called a button bolt a button bolt with a flange good so we're gonna keep those right there so I know that's up top. Good. And then we've got one over here that you're going to undo that's the exact same. Now, on mine, it's a little bit different. And I'm going to show you why. Because I actually ended up breaking my uh, TFT mount. Not entirely, but it, it certainly is not in good shape. And I'll show you what I did to fix it. My bolt is on this side. And I actually like this uh, fix better. I like it. Uh, better than what it was before. It was actually pretty flimsy before, in my opinion. So I've got this really nice thick bolt running all the way through on this TFT here. I right, so the TFT should come loose. I'm going to get my Phillips here to go ahead and release the... Uh, actually, I can probably do it with my hand. Yep, the connector should come out. Good, very nice. All right, so you can see my TFT here. Um, there should be a really nice kind of um, something, you know, very similar to what you've got going on here. Should be here as well, too. And I ended up stripping this bolt out, and it's very, very small. I mean, it's, it's the same size as, as these right here. Very, very small bolt that just goes right in there. And if you strip that out, good luck getting that thing out because it sits recessed inside here, and it's... it's impossible to get your pliers in there to get anything around it so what i had to do is i had to get a drill drill straight through the head of that that bolt uh until it came loose uh pulled everything out and uh, ended up damaging this part right here so i had to remake it so i went to the store and found one of these little grommet things that uh, you know are supposed to actually be used on electrical wires but it works great. It works really, really nice. It is a piece of rubber in there, so it's definitely has some padding in there. And the other thing too is, you know, this is a lot, a lot more solid than that flimsy, teeny tiny little bolt that uh, sits, sits on there originally. <laughs> now I don't recommend you breaking this and doing that. This is just something that I had to do to get this thing to, f to freaking work again. So, so it wasn't flopping all over the place. All right, so once we've got that done, uh, now we can go ahead and get access to some of the other bolts that are pinching everything together here a little bit easier. Okay, so there are two bolts on each side here. You see there's one right here and one on the other side. And this is holding this headlight supporter. So we need to go ahead and undo that. 
good. There are two bolts back here. You only need to remove one. Once you, and I would recommend removing the lower one. It's a little bit easier uh, to get to, and you're probably not gonna be able to use something like this. You'll have to have one of those just smaller Allen wrenches. Once you remove one of those bolts, which I've already done, then you can just slide this down out of the way. You don't have to re completely remove that. All right, this is gonna be at the bottom. Same thing on this side. Great. And just move her down there, it's out of the way. Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and remove some of these bolts, pinching everything together here. Okay, there's one. It's one step higher. Good, and there's one up top here that we need to undo. Now this is another bolt that I luckily was able to get out somehow. It almost stripped out in the process of pulling it out. Uh, you know, again, because I've done this several times, you guys. Um, so I replaced this one with uh, the Amazon bolts that I, well, they're not Amazon. There's some, it's some bolt website. So good. I've got everything kind of layered out here in, in terms of like, you know, okay, so these are the lowest parts here. These are what are holding on those headlight, uh, kind of that bar supporter. Up next comes, you know, that little pinch bolt here, TFT bolts, and then up that bolt I just released up at the top. So that's kind of how I'm organizing all my stuff. So this is kind of slowly starting to come apart now, you can see. Okay, so what we need to do next here is to get these out of the way so we can, we can cleanly remove the headlight bolts. So for that, you're going to need your Phillips screwdriver. So go ahead and grab that. And this is great because you'll learn how to actually replace these. It's pretty simple. There's just one very simple screw that sits in there like that and that's it simple as that i'll show you how to uh, connect and disconnect these later do it again so that just kind of comes out now another reason why I'm removing these, or at least this one, is because uh, the shift light right here actually has a uh, a little on this on this one. You won't have it on the other one. You can see there's a little dip in here, and that little dip is designed for the shift light to be uh, you know wired into uh, into the wiring harness. So it kind of just sits right in there, and there's just enough room for me to get this wire probably right next to it. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, because as you can see, this is ready to go. It's ready to be mounted essentially right there. So I'm going to mount this here. I'm going to run these wires right underneath there. So it should look pretty clean, pretty neat in my opinion. Okay, so these are the headlights here. So yeah, you can see I've got kind of my headlight assembly all kind of, you know, based on where their, their height is on the headlight. So I don't forget. Okay, now we can go ahead and remove the bolts that are securing the headlight itself to the uh, assembly. There's gonna be four, one, two, three, four. You can see these bolts are special. They've got this like kind of, um, you know, this, uh, I don't even know what to call that, but basically they have that. It helps kind of hold that whole assembly to the uh, the headlight to the assembly good we've got one more and our headlight should loosen up here everything should loosen up real good okay great now just be careful you do have some rubber grommets here that can pop out just be careful that they don't pop out if they do then just pull them out and, and make sure that you put them where they need to be Okay, one, two, three, four. For my lights here, good. All right, now everything I believe should be loosened up enough that I can go ahead and pull this apart. Yep, and it just literally slides out. Now, if this is the first time you are doing this, you may have uh, a little bit of trouble getting this out, and that's because you've got this kind of sealant here that's gonna be sticking to the housing. Um, so it may be a little bit difficult to get out for the first time, but after that, um, it's, it's pretty simple. Okay, so you've got your uh, headlight connector here. That's real simple. You're just going to press down. 
and remove just like that and we've got our headlight out very simple so if you ever need to replace this you know how to do it now okay good so um let's take a look at, at each each little thing here okay so these two right here you can see they're color-coded gray and green these are going to be for your blinkers left and the right it's really nice make sure that you don't mix those up <laughs> otherwise you're going to have some problems um, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be too hard one thing you want to be careful about these is making sure that they get these wires get pushed up and stored in the upper area they don't get pinched back here behind that headlight so that's how you replace these blinkers they're really simple easy to replace not a huge issue okay um, the next thing here we've got is you will have a connector you won't it won't look like this um, I believe it's probably connectors similar to this right here uh, I went ahead and just did this because I had this uh, hanging around and it just looks a lot cleaner and neater um, you also have another one and the wires look identical so you've got a blue on red and then a black uh, a yellow stripe on on black these are the ignition connected power sources so when you turn the ignition off you will lose power to these connectors when you turn the ignition on you will get power so these are going to be used for things where you know you definitely do not want them to be on all the time or maybe there's no power switch on the you know the auxiliary item that you're connecting so for this one, I've got my, um, you know, my USB port. It's connected straight into here. You can see it's kind of sitting in there. It's actually sitting right here. I can pull this out just like that. So you can see the color here is different on this one. You've got a blue on yellow or uh, yellow. Yeah, blue on yellow and the yellow on black. This is directly connected to the battery. So if you've got an accessory that you want to connect directly to the battery, and you don't want to run it all the way back there you've got this little nice little accessory here too as well now if you end up um, you know uh, sparking these you're probably going to blow a fuse so don't worry about it it's not a big deal i've done it before you can just go back behind the seat open up your fuse box and uh, i believe it's a 10 and a 15 that uh you know fuse that that uh, protects these so don't worry about that if you do end up sparking those out it's not a big deal so this uh, is connected into that and again today i'm going to be uh, connecting this bad boy up here and i'm going to be doing that via this little port back here so i'm going to run my wire here as i mentioned and we're going to come around here and connect into the other ignition connectors and again we've got um, ground which is going to be black with the yellow stripe and your power is blue with the red stripe so make sure you don't mix those up i'm going to go ahead and throw this in and i'll tape it up in a moment here Good. so we shouldn't have any power nope nothing's turning on there let me get my key here and we're going to test this out make sure everything works yeah there it goes so we know that this is connected into the ignition so turning the ignition off turns it off we're good to go so this is exactly where I want it to be now I know I've tested it again you guys when you're doing electrical stuff make sure you test this stuff out before you button everything up because if you mess something up you got to rip it all apart again it's just not fun okay so let's get this taped up so it doesn't short good I'm just going to stack that also what we're doing here is preventing the connectors from getting removed you know if it was something like that I wouldn't be worried about it getting removed but uh these connectors they tend to sometimes get dislodged not too worried about it being back here behind the headlight but um, still just want to make sure just insurance because you don't want to have to break this stuff down and get in here and do this as many times as i have because well you're going to start stripping screws out <laughs> it just happens uh, unless you're really careful i sometimes get impatient and that's a lot of the reasons why i end up stripping things or screwing things up just impatient all right that should do it all right i'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook this up here so you can see i've got this uh, hooked onto a gopro mount uh, now unfortunately this mount does not come with i'm going to show you what it is this mount does not come with this particular uh, unit this actually came with the previous uh, tire pressure monitor system and i'm just reusing it on here so if you're like oh that's cool i want that and you go to buy this sorry it's not going to come with it 
Uh, the other nice feature about this guy too is it has a USB plug in the side here that can actually be used as a power source. So now I've got, I believe, three uh, 3.0 quick charge ports and then two, uh, one, one USB-C quick charge port on here too as well. And I have three voltmeters. <laughs> I've got one here, one on here, and then one on the TFT as well too. So <laughs> extra insurance added there. Okay, good. So we're going to pop that in. Uh, by the way, these things can get popped off too as well. And, and sometimes, you know, if you need to see what's going on in here, if you've got something pinched or something like that, or you've got some wires that you want to throw in there or kind of push back, see maybe perhaps what's blocking the uh, headlight, you can pop these things off really nice and get access inside there. Okay, good. So we've got that wired in. Now, if you want to take this whole assembly off, you can, and I've done that before too as well. Um, what you're going to end up doing is, uh, you know, pulling, pulling this ignition sleeve off it's very simple it just literally just comes off like that it's just pinched in there you're going to be pulling that off and um, then i believe down underneath here there's a plate and that plate has a plastic torque screw and you're going to remove that torque screw uh, and then remove that plate out and uh, sorry there are two of them there's one here and there's one on the other side so you remove those those plastic torque screws they're kind of you know, the kind where you push it in and then there's a little flange that gets pull, pushed out and it keeps that plastic piece and it also keeps the bottom of this together as well. Once you pull those out, pretty much this whole assembly will just come right out. Um, there are two bolts though, actually. Sorry, I, I did lie. There are two bolts. There's one here and there's one down here. You remove those two as well. Once you remove those two and that little plastic plate down here, then this whole assembly will come off. The entire thing will come out. And, you know, you may want to do that. Like, you know, I've got some wires here that I wired through here. And, you know, when I did that, I pulled this entire assembly off in order to get a really clean wiring going through here. So a couple other things that you need to be careful of, too. Make sure that these things don't get lost. You know, if, if, uh, if you lose these, they get pulled out, they fall off or something like that. Um, you know, I, I definitely recommend pulling them off if you're going to actually be doing a ton of work back here. Um, as you can lose those, it's not fun at all. Um, the other thing too is these right here, these bolts that hold in the uh, headlamp right here, there are see these nuts, sorry. These are just literally pressed into the plastic. And so what that means is you don't want to be, you know, really tightening these down hard. Um, also, you want to be very careful about stripping these out too, because you can't replace these. They're pressed inside here. I accidentally, I think it was, yep, it was this one I stripped out. And so what I had to do is I had to retap it. Thankfully, retapping it actually worked, and um, I was able to, to spare, save, save this part from getting ruined. Uh, but yeah, you cannot replace these. They're pressed in there really, really hard. Okay, I think that is it, you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and button this thing up, and I'm gonna give you guys a few tips here on how to do that and make sure that everything is where it needs to be and you don't pinch wires because that's the most important thing. You don't want to pinch wires and break things here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, okay, as I mentioned, this is going to, this is going to be how this, uh, this headlamp uh, is going to go inside. And so you can see that you really don't have a whole lot of room around these areas. There are two cavities inside here that you're going to want to concentrate all of these wires. And I'm going to show you where. The first cavity you can see obviously is going to be way down back deep here and that cavity is going to contain these uh, connectors here i'm not sure there's just a bunch of wires connected to them but these these will go down inside here they fit very nicely inside there same with, with this kind of main wiring harness here is all going to sit there uh, sorry one more thing the other thing too here you can see this here this guy right here is, um, it's gonna fall out if you do take this whole assembly apart. It may not fall out, but if you've got this loose enough, then it may end up, this may end up happening. And if that happens, you're not gonna get this thing together. It's not gonna sit cleanly together. You're also not gonna be able to get these bars on. So you gotta make sure that this is in place right here. This little bar is in place and it's where it needs to be before you button everything up here. Okay, so again, those cavities, we're gonna be pushing these wires into this cavity here. The, uh, let's go ahead and uh, make sure that kind of this all sits up here. 
So the second cavity that you're gonna have where you'll have space to mount stuff, uh, I used to have a navigation unit on here that had a power converter that was pretty big. And I took that power converter and I basically just stuck it right up in here. I could, got some stu uh, sticky tape, cleaned that up and just stuck it right up into there. And that worked out really nice. So this upper area, you're gonna have a l quite a bit of space actually to uh, you know, put any of those extra wires that you put in here, do the accessories and all that stuff. So kind of get everything generally in that upper area. We're gonna have to do that uh, you know, as we so kind of just let that kind of sit there. Same thing with this blinker, just kind of rest it somewhere so it can make sure that those do not get messed up. Good, yeah, look at that, nice. Good, so you know what, I may actually end up uh, just kind of throwing these in loosely. I'm gonna have to probably undo them. Actually, no, it stayed, good. All right, so let's go ahead and get, kind of get that in there so it's resting. But again, you're just gonna wanna make sure that, that everything is kind of sitting, everything that's not back there needs to be sitting up top. Just like this. Except obviously our, uh, you know, our, uh, the headlight uh, connector here. Good. All right. So let's get the headlight connector going here. Hook everything up. Okay, I noticed my, that fell back down. You definitely do not want this to be here. It's gonna get pinched and crushed. And these things are really teeny tiny. You just don't want that to happen. Okay. Very nice. Again, you want to make sure that you're giving yourself enough slack on these wires. Good. Very nice. And what you're looking for is that, that kind of click. Everything's just going, to, it's just going to pop right in there. And you know you've got it solid in there. And you should not be forcing this thing. You should not be shoving this thing as hard as you can back there. If you are, then you've got something in the way. Something is sitting behind this headlight. And you've got to push it up into this open cavity here. Okay. Good. The other thing to check too is, is that you're lining up here with your, your bolt holes. And I am on that side. I am on this side too as well. Good. So nothing is really getting pinched here. It looks like it's very nicely smoothly in there. And I can go ahead and start buttoning this thing up here real nice. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get that headlight secured. So we'll get our four headlight bolts. It's a little bit of a press there. Yep. Not going to tighten that all the way. Same with this here. Yep, I've got enough slack there as well. So good. Let's do the other side. Okay, give it a nice twist until you feel it hit against that metal. Good. Don't worry about that sound. It's just the rubber, uh, you know, the rubber washer that sits between the whole um, unit. Good. Okay, now I've got a little uh, zip tie here that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use to put these together. Just to neaten everything up also, so nothing gets really jerked around. You know, there's certain things you have to do with these kinds of bikes that go off road. You know, you just have to be mindful that a branch could get stuck in there and just rip everything to pieces. So, you know, there's little extra things that you have to do, extra insurance to make sure that these bikes are ready for off road. Good, so that's looking nice and neat there. I like that. Um, so let's go ahead and get these in down at the bottom here maybe a little bit of pushing there to get it in but uh we'll get her done 
And whenever you've got these bolts where you've got them on both sides, don't tighten them all the way down until you get them both in. Because uh, you may have to wiggle the, the assembly to get everything to fit in there right where it needs to be. Yep. So that needs to be pushed a little bit that way. Good. Okay, now it can be tightened down. Very nice. And let's go ahead and see how nicely this fits. Okay, so when you're putting these on, you're just gonna ensure that these two flanges, one in the back and one on the bottom, go in first. And then, you know, I've got my little dip here where I'm gonna put my wires. And it goes in place. Look at that. Absolutely perfect fit. Yeah, that's looking really good. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, screw this in. Yeah, I'm liking that. That looks really good. Okay, same thing, just ensuring. The back and the side, or the back and the bottom in there. Nice, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. See, it's not that hard, right? Okay, and then starting from the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and get our little uh, cinch cinch bolts that are holding everything together here. Now this bottom one, before you do that, if you have any auxiliary unit here that needs to be put in, make sure that you get it in place. And what I like to do is you're gonna hear it. I'll put it in, I'll click it in on the left side. See that? So it's clicked in, it's ready to go. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are all aligned up here. Everything's looking pretty good. So that when you cinch everything together, it all just kind of squeezes without hindrance. Okay, let's go ahead and put this bottom one in. Okay, she's catching. There we go, kind of hearing everything kind of come together. Very nice, good. So my auxiliary uh, little charger unit there is in. It's gonna get even tighter here in a second here, so don't worry about that. Good, all right. So moving our way up, next thing we're gonna do is the TFT display. So let's go ahead and grab that and connect it in first. Okay, so we've got the two flanges up top and the one down facing down. So go ahead and pop in the TFT there. And then just make sure that you're, you're getting inside this little groove here, a little groove. Good, looking nice. And we'll start with that bottom bolt there, and then we'll do these two up top. Make sure I'm catching, yep. Good, you can see everything kind of scrunching together here. Yeah, there it goes. Now, if you have the uh, OEM bolts, again, do not wrench these things down. They don't need to be that tight. They really don't need to be tight. A lot of the tension here is taken care of by the, uh, the compression of these rubber washers here. So they don't need to be like really, really super tight. I don't even know, there might be uh, torque spec specifications for these, perhaps, I'm not sure, but nothing that I know of. Just a nice snug twist at the end here, just to get them to, to sit right. Good. Very nice. And then again, again, before you test, if you put everything back together, just make sure your TFT turns on. Yep, we're good to go. Very nice. Good. Love it. Looking nice. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good, actually. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, great. So we've got that. Now we'll go ahead and put this upper bolt here before we slide on the center column here. So this actually should be similar to, I believe, the one down here, but it's all I've got right now, so I'm just gonna use this. It'll work, it'll get the job done, it'll keep everything together. So again, some of my bolts on here are different. They may not look the same as yours, you guys, because I have taken this thing apart more times than I even care to do. 
And having done so, I've stripped a lot of these bolts out and I've had to replace them. So don't worry if you're pulling stuff off and you're like, hey, my bolts don't look like that. Okay, now it's time for the center column here to come on here. So again, assuring, ensuring that this is all kind of lining up down here. You've got your bolt holes lined up down there. And then you're just going to press this in and it'll snap in. Just a nice, easy, easy snap. Ensure that it's in there. Pull on it. Make sure it doesn't move. Great, that's in there. Good to go with that. Let's go ahead and do our spoilers here or our fenders or our whatever majiggers you want to call them. Okay, so this little uh, grommet, this plastic grommet here is going to sit inside there. So getting that out of the way. Got our uh, button bolt here. It just sits on top. We're going to put that one in first. Again, these don't need much. If you tighten these down too much, they're going to crack these, you know, this plastic real easy. And of course, with weather, this plastic just ages. It just ages so quickly. Okay, so the other fender, let's go ahead and put this in. I know I said I was going to glue that, but uh, maybe I'll do it later, which means I'll probably never do it. <laughs> Uh, it's held in with two, you know, two of these bolts here, so I'm I'm not afraid of this whole assembly getting um, yanked off. It's got to, you know, it's it's got to go through these two these two mounts before the whole thing falls off, anyways. So, yeah. nice little love twist there. Okay, now I've got the two bottom bolts here that are going to go in the side here and hold in these fenders, uh, spoilers, whatever you call them, on the bottom as well as my uh, auxiliary light unit. Okay, so um, if you've got an auxiliary light unit, I definitely recommend putting on rubber washers down here at the bottom so that, uh, well, they're gonna get squeezed in here um, so that, you know, you don't put a whole lot of pressure on these, these parts here. It's all plastic right there, so. And this doesn't line up as pretty as it should. Okay, so I'm just gonna get that in there. Again, just making sure that you got the right angle on this. You do not want to strip these out. You cannot replace these, okay? So my rubber grommet just kind of pinched inside there, and it's sitting between here and the plastic here. So it should... Hear that cracking in there? <laughs> it's not what I want. It is what it is. I'm not going to replace these. They're so expensive, you guys. They're just so ridiculously expensive. And there goes the washer popping in. Good, and that is not going anywhere. This thing is really solid. Really, really solid. Things you wanna make sure of is, you know, these lines here that, that you can see both pieces that come together. Just make sure there's no gaps in there. There's, there shouldn't be any gaps in there. This thing should be really nice and tight and solid in there. Okay, let's go ahead and get on the windshield unit here, all the mounting hardware for that. First thing first is we get the side mounts here. They slip in. Press down, slip in, press down. Uh, this is a bit of a pain, but you know, you know what they say, beauty is pain, right? I love the look of this. It is kind of a pain to put all this together, but I do really love the look of it. So I make the sacrifice. You can tell I've done this many, many times. So unfortunately, this sits pretty high. I really wish uh, they would have engineered this a little bit better. I may have I've gotten a, a dud on this one. I don't know, but uh, it just sits really high off that GPS mount. Okay, anyways, let's get the other side in. Again, just finger tightening at this point. Good, making sure we've got our everything in there. All right. Let's go ahead and tighten her down. And I like to have this uh, sitting back. So you guys may notice I've gotten rid of my C5 Pro, the navigator unit. And uh, the reason I did that is, um, I'm not gonna lie, I shorted it out. <laughs> I shorted it out, accidentally put the uh, the negative i swapped the negative and positive when i was plugging it in and it shorted out the power converter on it which kind of surprised me i mean usually those they've got 
you know, fail safes for those things. But, uh, um, but the other thing uh, is I was actually, to be honest, I was actually thinking about getting rid of it anyways. And that is because uh, I just didn't use it. I didn't use it. I thought I would, I would really benefit from having something where I could see a bigger version of my phone, the maps on my phone, but it just ended up not working out. So I hardly ever used it and it just got annoying because I kept having to turn it on and off and all this stuff. And so I'm kind of glad to, to get rid of it. I'm kind of, well, I'm not happy I broke it, but uh, it is broken. It's totally shot and I tried to fix it. Wouldn't, wouldn't get fixed. So yeah, definitely not going back to that. All right, great. So that is super solid tight on there. Let's go ahead and get our windshield on and close this out here. Because this is getting long. Okay, here we go. So, again, the top. Put in the top first. It's going to be the easiest. And you're going to be using the short bolts for this one. Uh, for those of you interested in this windshield, this is made of ABS. It is not polycarbonate, which is the recommended material for windshields. It's the strongest, the most resilient. Although ABS is tougher uh, with brunt impacts, it will take brunt impacts better than polycarbonate. But uh, what ABS does and polycarbonate doesn't do uh, is um, it shatters. So if it does end up breaking from hard impact, it will shatter all over the place and cause all sorts of dangerous scenarios. So, um, yeah, just be just be real careful if you guys are gonna gonna decide to go with this this windshield. Uh, polycarbonate when it gets hit, when it gets um, a heavy impact, it it just cracks, and you know it, this stuff shatters into shards, and it can get kind of dangerous. That said, it's uh, certainly not as bad as um, you know the uh, the cheaper, even cheaper material. Uh, what what is it? Um, yeah, some other cheap plastic, I can't remember. And work your way down on this. You don't wanna, you don't wanna, um, you know, just start all the way down at the bottom here. Uh, you're gonna work this, work your way down because you're pinching everything down. Um, I use this headlight grill, which is not recommended to be used with this because it doesn't really quite fit that well. But it actually kind of works out. Um, the mounting hardware that is originally for this thing, I just pulled it off because the windshield actually pinches everything everything down. You'll see as I as I work my way down here, it, it just naturally serves as as uh, a way to kind of keep this headlamp uh, guard pinched down at the bottom. Again, you don't want to be putting these down too tight. Uh, they don't need to be very tight. Again, these. It's the rubber on rubber that really um, just kind of creates that friction. So these will not come undone. Okay, so you can see it's it's kind of creating that jet, that natural. Um, yeah, I mean this thing is not going anywhere. It's totally not going anywhere. Naturally pinches down this uh, uh, headlight grill. Okay, that is the last one right there. We are in. Everything's locked in. <laughs> And we're buttoned up nice and good to go. Again, just ensuring that everything works. Everything uh, works without any warnings. Good, perfect, very nice, good. And of course, uh, you know, having installed this, what you're gonna wanna do is take those, uh, those units, those uh, Bluetooth units, which I've already done, the sensors, and they'll be placed on here. One thing just to keep in mind is, uh, is really tighten these down as, as hard as you can because you'll get a slow leak uh, if you don't. The rubber kind of, um, you know, valve stop in here that prevents the air from slowly leaking out is pretty hard. So again, you're gonna be really twisting that on. And then of course, making sure that you got that lock nut um, really well in place too as well. So that's gonna be on the front and the rear. They have front and rear written on them. So make sure, make sure you got those right. You guys, I just noticed as I was uh, starting to put everything away that I forgot to put these bolts in uh, down here by the, uh, the little support, uh, headlight supporters. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll show you where these go. Yeah, this is the big one. This is the big daddy. So you can see down in here, this is where these bolts go. Um, actually, it's probably gonna do us better if we use just normal Allen, Allen wrenches for this. 
Okay, there it is. So finger tighten first, get that out of the way. The bottom one is a lot easier to remove too. It's not under tension. Plus I have neck brace, uh, uh, neck brace unit on here. So the top bolt is actually really, really, really tight. It's under pressure. This one though, doesn't take but a few twists to get it real tight. Yeah, so one thing to really keep your bolts organized because once you're done with the installation, if you've got bolts left over, then you know you missed something. So, okay, that's tight. Again, we're gonna go ahead and finger tighten. Do not drop these bolts here because the likelihood of them falling down into your, uh, you know, into your uh, bash plate is very high. And I'm speaking from experience. Yeah, I, I'm feeling a lot better, you guys, with the arms here. Um, just haven't done today's installation. I'm, you know, this is, you know, doing a lot of wrenching with my wrists here, which obviously is the most painful part, has been the most painful part, but today it's been pretty good. So I'm feeling like, I don't know, as soon as my shoulders get into shape here, I've got some issues, some muscle issues in the shoulders. Once those get resolved, I think I'm gonna get back on this bike here. I can't wait to get on it, I'll tell you what, you guys. Okay, great. She's all buttoned up, good to go. Okay, you guys, thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, if if you like this video, it really helped you out, then definitely like and subscribe. Uh, it helps bump the video up in the ranker. And again, of course, by doing so, it makes it much more accessible to other people who are looking for this kind of information. It's all just about helping you guys. It's really what I, I do this channel about. It's not about me. It's all about you guys. So uh, let's make it happen. Uh, so with that said, if you found something screwed up in here, I didn't do something right. Definitely let me know um, and put it put it in the comments. Let everyone else know, and I'll pin that comment to the top. I'm so you're not afraid of being wrong. Uh, that's how we learn, right? So, okay. Until next time, you guys. This is ADB in Japan. Out.